everybody, everybody, yeah. <laughs> I was just with kids and they loved NSYNC and that song came up a couple of times. I'm so happy to be back. Tonight's topic, tonight's topic is emotional triangles. It's actually kind of easy to spot it when you're in a triangle and we'll get into that. I'm going to, what are triangles? How do you find yourself in a hot drama mess? <laughs> Have you ever gotten into somebody's business, whether it's your child, your daughter, your son, your grandchild, or a sister, and it wasn't even your problem, but you got all involved in it and now you're kind of stuck in the middle and it's conflict and it's painful and it's dramatic. I hate triangles. So we're going to unpack that a little bit tonight. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at what triangles are. We're going to look at how to start the process of disengaging from triangles. Because it's kind of easy to do. It just takes gumption and tenacity. And, um, and then we're going to look at if you're in a triangle right now. I happen to be in two triangles right now <laughs> that I'm working really hard to disentangle and come out of. So in this, just so you know, the context of this is for those in your life that you deeply, deeply, deeply care about. Because it gets more complicated when it's people you love, doesn't it? It like gets all goofed up with your stuff, their stuff, together stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. I see you guys are showing up. Um, topic tonight for those just joining are emotional triangles. So I got to do a couple of announcements before we get started. Of course, I got to shout out my honey bunny, my husband, Terry. Some of you know him. Some of you see him live over on the Joy page. And he has a good fat company. So he has diabetes-friendly products. They're just delicious. And someone tonight's going to win one of his products, which are the good fat bars. It's the dark chocolate peanut, which is my favorite. I'll tell you in a minute what those prizes are um, uh, at the end of the lecture tonight. Okay, a couple of things to announce. Join our Joy is a Habit Facebook group. The group is amazing. We only post joyful stuff laughing stuff, sometimes kind of inappropriate humor, but it is what it is. To me, inappropriate humor is using, I don't know, a little bit of misogyny, just very present to it. It's just a really great page, and it reminds you to stay present to the habit of joy. I, everything I mention, I will put up a link so you know where to go and all that if you want to join. Um, also tonight, at the end of the lecture, someone's going to win one of these good fat bars, and I'm going to throw in one of our kindnesses, Contagious Masks. We have some swag at the Project Forgive store here on Facebook as well as on our website. We have new products coming out. We're going to bundle them together to get ready for the holidays. And uh, we've got uh, I'm Sorry cards coming. We've got mugs coming. We've got some really cool things coming. Right now we have masks. We have our Apology necklace, um, the Apology You'll Never Receive. It's actually our signature tool. And we also have Forgiveness Essential Oil that is pure... Um, organic it's exquisite it's delicious and we get a lot of beautiful reviews on our essential oil okay um, the apology workshop is coming up we're known for our signature tool which is the apology you'll never receive it's an internal mastery of leadership for emotional intelligence calming down that fight-or-flight mode or the amygdala brain and it is a tool that you practice over and over and over again till you master it. Our next one is December 3rd at 7 p.m. Eastern. It's December 3rd, 7 p.m. Eastern. I made all the graphics and stuff. I'll put them up when I'm done with tonight's live. So if you'd like to come, please come. And it's cheap or it's free. It's $6.99. Thank you for that, Nancy. I so appreciate you. Um, it's $6.99. And if you are struggling financially, we turn nobody away. So you will not be turned away. All you have to do is email us joy at projectforgive.com, joy at projectforgive.com, and highly from my office will get you all set up and registered and all that good stuff, okay? So that's happening December 3rd. All right, what else do I got to announce? Do I got to announce anything else? Let me look. Um, oh, thank you for the stars. You guys are amazing. Whenever you send us stars, they, we get a little bit of money from Facebook, and we use it to sponsor people in for scholarships for our apology workshop and other workshops that we do. Um, if you're new as well, tell us. Tell us that you're new. We love new people. We love to welcome you and even the, our community, which is so empathic, so precious, so loving. 
people are going to love you up. That's just what we do here, okay? I see you guys are showing up. Hello, hello. I'm getting ready to start on emotional triangles. That's what we're doing. Sandra's in the house. Hey, Sandra, it's so nice to see you. Let's see. I see you guys. Hi. Welcome, welcome. Hey, Terry's in the house. Jeannie's in the house. Welcome, guys. So glad you're here. Marielle's there. Buenas tardes or noches, depending on where you are in Puerto Rico for time. I'm trying to think what's the time zone in Puerto Rico. Yeah, I'm with you. Okay. All right, good. Okay, going down to the bottom. I'm going to start the content. I will, as I share some stuff, I'll come back and see what you guys are seeing. Okay? Yep, so with you, Dolores. You sure can. All right, so and what is an emotional triangle? It's like when you're caught in the middle of two people got something going on, some kind of conflict, and you get sucked in. There's a reason why you get sucked in. It's because it hits something for you that you want to get involved. I call it codependency. <laughs> it's so much easier to get involved in someone else's conflict than it is to deal with your own stuff. And especially if it hooks you in a, in a powerful way. I got a couple of great examples. I am so good at this triangle thing. Okay, they're a way to understand. Emotional triangles are a way to understand the relationship dynamics, particularly among family members. And it's explore, what I want to do tonight is explore triangles so it can help you understand ways that you might decrease some relationship stress, bow out of a triangle, and... Um, and you, you can only change a relationship within which you have the authority or you have the conflict. So if mom and dad are fighting, I try to get in and fix it, it doesn't work that well. Because I don't have the primary relationship. It's the conflict between those two people, right? Here's a, a Swahili proverb. This is what it said. I thought this was really perfect for tonight to mention it. When elephants fight, it's the grass that gets crushed. Triangulation is a natural way of handling anxiety. It actually stems from anxiety. If anxiety in one relationship is not resolved, it will be played out in another relationship. And then a person feels relief from tension when the anxiety is shifted to a third party, yet the anxiety in the original relationship is unchanged. It's just merely relocated. So all you do in a triangle is shuffling anxiety or shuffling conflict. It, you heard the saying, too many cooks in the kitchen, right? When someone's got a, an issue, okay. So you know that they exist, and when a triangle is going on, this is how it feels, okay? The reactivity from those two people, is exp they're expressing it towards you, and it's excessive, it's strong, and far beyond what might be normal. It's just very activated, and when you're in a triangle, someone is over-focused on you. Have you ever gotten into a triangle and then it became about you did the wrong thing, gave the wrong advice, did the wrong whatever, okay? Um, and sometimes you look for a sympathetic third person who will share your irritation and commiserate with you, right? Know that, know that. That's why I'm so particular when I'm really struggling with my husband. I do not go to girlfriends. I have a therapist. I'm a big therapy person because I don't want to sway my girlfriends to not like my husband. I want to sometimes just vent. Are you with me? And what I've noticed in the past for me, when I vent about my husband to a girlfriend, it inevitably changes how they see my husband. That is not the game. The game is for me to emote, find a way to find a solution, and to solve the problem, right? That's the game. You all, then the next one is perfect on the list. You become allied with a friend against your friend's opponent. You become allied with the person that's sharing information with you. And what also happens, too, when you're in a triangle, you need to rescue. You're rescuing them from anxiety. You're not really rescuing them. You're just displacing the anxiety. You're rescuing nothing. Okay. And, um, and it doesn't help when someone's anxious like that to relocate that anxiety. Another reason you might be in uh, triangles is you pin your anxiety on someone else to relieve your own tension, your own upset, your own trigger, your own reactivity, your own amygdala brain wigging out, okay? So with that said, I'm going to give you an example and let's see if you guys can relate. Let's look at disentangling from a triangle, okay? So here, this was a couple weeks ago, all right? My, my daughter, she's actually my stepdaughter, so I'm saying that just for context, but she's calls me ma. She's my daughter. It's been that way for many years now. She's in her 30s. And she was on the phone with her dad. I was in the car, so the, it was on, you know, the loudspeaker. And she 
nailed him. She was so upset. She said so many things to me that would be so inappropriate. I was livid. I'm like, how could she talk to her dad like that? And I'm like thinking, okay, I, how am I going to be able to be authentic in a relationship with her and without sharing my upset and, you know, we need to clear the air because I know it's not my issue, but I need to tell her this. And then I had time to calm down. And one of the things that I really saw was the level of triangulation with my daughter and how I needed to take a step back. Let me go back a couple of steps. I'll come back to the story with my daughter in just a second. Hang on one second. So when I was a teenager and in my 20s and 30s, my mom and my sister were tight or thick as thieves. They were very tight. I was the outsider always. I was the big mouth. I was sensitive. I was all these things. My mother and my sister were very similar. And when they were upset with each other, they'd come to me, okay? And I learned in my 20s, I got help from a therapist years ago, that when someone pulled, when my mom or my sister pulled me into a triangle, my pat response every single time, and this is what I did, it took about two years for this triangulation to dissolve. Two freaking years, you guys, okay? And I would say to my sister, my mom, I'm like, you know what, mom? This isn't from you for, to be telling me I want to bow out of the triangle. You, I can't hear this. I need you to go to Cindy direct. Well, of course, they didn't like that, okay? But I kept doing it, and I kept doing it in a loving way. Oh, oh, the triangle's happening, and I do this to you. Let me sit down my phone so you can see what I would do. I go, la, 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 la. you can't, that's a triangle. I can't, I can't do anything about it. You need to tell Cindy or mom direct. Tell, mother, tell that to mom. Don't tell me. La, 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 la. So it actually became a joke and it became fun and funny at the same time. It took a while. At first, usually when you set boundaries, especially around triangles, people react because they're used to doing it a certain way. And as you make the unconscious conscious, because that's what Project Forgive is all about, making the unconscious conscious. As you get more conscious in what you can control for you, that's when you have the oomph or the power to say, nope, can't, I got to stop you midstream. That's your upset with mom. You got to take that directly to mom. I'm sorry. I wish I could solve this for you. I wish I could do it. And I can't. So I'm going to bow out of this conversation. I'm upset with you. I can't believe you won't even listen to me talk. I love you so much, my dear sweet sister, I'd say back to her. And I value our relationship. I value your relationship with mom. I value my relationship with mom. And whenever I get in one of these triangles, it's so painful for me. And I just, I can't do it. I value you guys too much as my mother and my sister. That kind of conversation over and over and over again. And eventually it caught on. And eventually they wouldn't even come to me. So that was great. Okay. Now, back to my daughter, okay? So I'm sitting there, and I already said I was going to do um, emotional triangles because that was two weeks ago. I'm like, okay, if you, there's different ways that this could play out going to your daughter, being upset with her about how she just yelled at your husband. You could let her know how you feel, okay? <laughs> and let her know how disappointed you are. And then I really started thinking about this. Okay, so what I do for a living, I do conflict management. That's pretty much all I do. I do high pressure communication. I work with corporations. All I do is help people work together and solve problems. And I'm really good at it. Add in the family dynamic for me, I'm not so good. So one of the things I've been doing, practicing, is okay, if this, were, I've been asking myself, if this were a work situation, if, if Joe's daughter, did this to Joe, and he heard this, and heard her talking horrible to his wife, what advice would you give him? How would you unpack this? How would you solve this? Well, then I had the aha. It is not my dynamic. The triangle between my husband and my daughter was very deep when my, da when my daughter was a teenager, and I've learned a lot. So I'm like, okay, it's not my job to tell her how I feel for two reasons. One is because I'm jumping into a triangle, right, and actually making it more messy. They work stuff out. They always work stuff out. They don't need my input. You got it? Okay. And then the other thing is, and this is a tough word to hear. This is a tough word to hear. I'm going to use the word narcissism. 
And I don't mean narcissism in terms of a clinical diagnosis because there, is, there are actual mental illnesses of narcissism. I'm talking about that broad spectrum of narcissism when you have a hard time seeing things outside of yourself and you focus on other people and you want to be expressed and you want people to meet your needs, sometimes inappropriately. That's the narcissism I'm talking about. And one of the biggest complaints I see not only in my practice, in my agency, it, it's really about parents that try to get their needs met from their kids, like sharing with them how upset they are. And I'm talking about adult kids, okay? It doesn't work. It does not work. And what would I do in business? Well, what I would do in business is I would bow out of that triangle and I would come back to Rachel with a solution. And I, that's exactly what I did. You know, I know there was you know, some concern about my grandchild's headset and that it got left in the car and when she comes to visit, that the headset got left behind and you really need it. I understand that. So what I'm thinking, let's buy two of them. Let's have one at home, one at my house, so she always has one, the little grandchild always has, so there's never an issue. And or how we could solve this is we could double check the overnight bag when, when kids come home. We can make sure the laptop's there. We can make sure important stuff has traveled back to our grown children's house with the grandkids. Making sense? She loved it. She's like, absolutely. I will buy one. I says, no, you won't. I will buy one. And I just bought one. I'm going to show it to you because it's so cute. I just got it in the mail when I came back from traveling. And here it is. It'll be here for little Aves. When she comes over, because she's very sensitive to noise, here's her little headset with the unicorns on them, okay? And of course, my daughter loved it that she didn't have to have responsibility of her getting it, that I, mother, grandmother, gifted them with that. It was $16 on Amazon, okay? Not a big deal, right? And I didn't get sucked in or locked in to all the drama of that upset. It wasn't mine to manage. Make sense? It, that triangle was not mine to manage. Now, I had another one happen. And it's been ongoing, and I've been trying to manage it with another child. And um, I didn't do so hot. <laughs> it ended up in a hot mess. And so I was able to reconsider, relook at it, what's mine, what's theirs, and actually apologize for my role in it. Now... Like in the scheme of things, probably 1% was my fault, 99% over there. I have no issue apologizing. When I've hurt someone or they felt attacked, um, whether it's a trigger or not, I'm really good at being able to apologize and finding empathy and compassion for them. But what's cool about this is the way that I was able to do that and why I was able to do it is because I was able to look at what just happened with my one daughter saying something to my husband that I didn't like. And so my, my reactivity, I was able to soothe my reactivity, let myself be real. I was upset for three days, okay, with this last thing that happened. Not my job to go to my daughter, not my job to go to her husband and tell him when I'm disappointed and all that. Those needs are met with peers, not with our children. I don't care how old they are. Children are still children. It's great when you can shift in a relationship and have more of a friendship and our adult children still look to us to get their needs met and that's where that conversation of narcissism shows up if we feel compelled and I'm going to use the word compelled compelled to have to be expressed because you were upset pick and choose who you're going to share your upset with so you can start unpacking it so you can start alleviating the trigger, alleviating the reactivity. And especially if you come from a family system that you didn't talk about your feelings at all, okay? Because we go through this pendulum saying, well, I was never expressed. I'm going to be expressed about that. Yeah, and you need to consider how you're impacting in a triangle. And I think that's all I want to say about that. Is that making sense? Yeah, I'm with you, Gabby, on taking care of your dad. I so get it. And isn't it neat that I can say to my daughter, saying, you know what, Autumn? Scratch that conversation we had yesterday that was so 
out of the ordinary. That is not my business. I should never have approached you or even put that on you. And I'm so sorry. And I'm working on that. And she loved it. She absolutely loved that. See if you're saying anything. This is a really tough skill. And you know, when I give examples like this, I just want to give you like one or two examples, like how to stop triangles when they're happening and how to disengage when you're in the midst of one, remembering that it's not yours to have. It's something to keep you busy. <laughs> I hate to put it that way, but like you need something to focus on instead of your own pain or your own stuff. Why not focus on someone else's stuff so they can get all activated and go over there, right? That's literally what happens. Um, so here's what I want to say. This is the bottom line tonight. If you're deeply offended by a close family member, deeply, deeply offended, deeply, deeply offended, take a breath, give it a day or two, because this is the time for you to dig deep, to look and see what else might be going on for you. Because when you're really reactive, like I was so upset when my daughter talked to my husband like that, there was other stuff going on there that was incomplete for me that I was able to look at and say, okay, you know, let's take a deep breath. Because reactivity sucks, man. When you live, live in reactivity, it's like you're a pinball machine. You're bouncing off people's upset. You're upset with them. And it's like you have no control over your life. And there's no emotional intelligence. There's no ability to calm or soothe that amygdala part of your brain, that fight or flight. And when you give yourself a little bit of time and really assess, is this worth a conversation with this specific person? Figuring out, is this mine? Whose is this? Am I stepping into a triangle? Am I stepping <laughs> into a hornet's nest? Because <laughs> I see triangles like hornet's nests. I really, really do, okay? Let's see if you're saying anything I need to say. <laughs> That's so great, Nadine. That's wonderful. Oh, Terry, I'm so glad the explanation helped. Consistency pays off. Melissa, you are spot on. Okay, I'm looking at you, Claudia, and he gets so emotionally tired. Yeah, Claudia, and the, I so get that. And that's, um, tell your husband to come <laughs> watch our shows because that's about um, when we're very empathic and very compassionate. Um, Claudia is writing about that everyone vents to, the, to her husband and he gets so emotionally tired. It is draining. It keeps you so busy. And sometimes when my husband wants to vent about something, we have a daily meeting of seven minutes each daily, so I always know that I'll have the opportunity to share if I'm upset about some, something. I also give myself 24 hours to see if I'm still really upset because when you're triggered or reactivated, it takes a good 20 minutes to calm down. So when you react quickly, you don't have time to soothe and calm yourself and go to your highest self. And that's what we refer to all the time, making the unconscious conscious, increasing that awareness about how you're communicating. Make sense? Okay, let's see. What else? I'm looking at what Nadine is saying. I need to get back to you. That's perfect, Nadine. I think that's brilliant. Absolutely beautiful. Melanie's saying hi to everybody. Yep, totally get it, Claudia. I'm with you. Oh, Teresa, I'm so happy to hear that, that you've done that with your sisters. Because really, when you stop the triangulation, that's when the real juicy intimacy happens. That's when the loving relationships, that you go to a deeper level of kindness, of talking to each other at another level of compassion. And it's really a lovely life. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with you on the therapy. Okay, that's it. A couple of things before we go because I'm about to give away a prize. Next week, we're going to do um, unpacking microaggressions. And, um, you know, I debated about this because, boy, anytime we talk about race, it seems to inflame a lot of pain. This is one of my expertises. This is where I play in corporate all the time with hard conversations. And what are those microaggressions? What can you say instead? How do you backtrack? And this is particularly when you're with people of color. So I debated doing this one. The feedback I got when I did a live was, please bring it on. So I'm going to do microaggressions next week. And the top ones are like, one thing you never want to say to someone of color is, I don't see color. That's one of the worst things you can say to them. It's like saying, oh, I, you're overweight. I don't see that you're overweight. Well, of course you do. <laughs> you're very overweight. 
<laughs> I'm not saying have that conversation. That's not what I'm saying. And we do see color. And what, can, what are things we can say instead? There's several microaggressions that a lot of us do. I'm guilty of them. And I'm raising my awareness around systemic racism. And I look forward to having a lovely, lovely, lovely conversation. Okay? All right. Someone's going to win tonight. You're about to win one of our masks. Kindness is contagious. And you're going to get one of my honey bunnies. Good fat bars. And they are delicious. Organic. No sugar. Monk fruit. They're diabetes friendly. I eat these instead of Reese's peanut butter cups. I, they're actually meal replacements for me. I think this one has 163 calories. I can eat one of these and not eat for three or four hours and it's so delicious, okay? All right, so someone's about to win. So here's how you're gonna win. I'm gonna have you, you gotta type it in, gotta type in a heart. Type in a heart and let's say what's gonna be the Number six, the sixth person that types in a heart is going to get this mail to them. The only caveat is you have to be in the U.S. We do our prizes in the U.S. only because of shipping and because of our finances. That's the best we can do. We're just grateful we can give away um, gifts. You can win many, many times. Linda is number one. I'm looking for six hearts. Nanny is number two. Nadine is number three. All you have to do is put a heart in the comments and hit send. Evelyn is number four. Tracy's number five. This next person is our winner. The next person is our winner, and it is Nancy Wharton. It's you, Nancy. I probably have your address, okay? Because <laughs> you bought stuff, you've won stuff. You can win every single week. I don't care. I think it's good chi when you're winning. And uh, you can win as many times as you'd like. So, Nancy, if you just make it really easy for me, if you can message me here on Facebook, only me and Hailey see your address and your email so we can track the packaging to make sure you get the package and all that nine yards so we'll make sure you get it okay thank you for joining us if you're inspired please share us whether you share a poster whether you share an article anything you share deeply impacts us with our corporate partners because they see our reach and they get very inspired and want to give us money for programming and that's something that I'm, I care about the most because our programming really focuses on teachers and it really focuses on women in leadership. And, of course, the apology you'll never receive. Look, at people are already saying, hey, Nancy, hooray, Evelyn, Claudia, they're saying good, congratulations. So thanks for joining. Next week we're going to talk about microaggressions. I really think you'll love it. I'm a straight talker when it, when it comes to the diversity, equity, and inclusion conversations. And I love, I love, love, love talking about how do we come closer together from people that are different colors or different backgrounds than us? That really gives me a lot of joy. Okay, so I will see you next week. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Big love, and I'll talk to you soon. Have an exquisite night, okay? All right, bye-bye.